and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer. This is the lovely Jasmine. Mouse is over here. He may pop his head in, you never know. And Badger is outside of the window yelling. He and Mouse are in a little, little riff right now. <sighs> Wish this would end, but we'll see. <laughs> Adult male cats, what can I tell you? So much fun. All right, so this is your new moon reading for the month of June. This is for June 15th through the 30th. Uh, new moon and Gemini people, this is very exciting. I'm, I'm excited because I'm really happy about this new moon. So we start off on the 15th with um, Mercury being square Saturn. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because on the 11th of June, Mercury went into Gemini, or is going into Gemini. Um, going into, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm actually, like, the calendar's down here, so I can't look at it over here, it's weird. So anyway, um, Mercury is in Gemini, all right? So on, um, on the 15th, Mercury is going to be square Saturn. So this is going to be really important to be diplomatic on how you speak how you present yourself, how you like choose your words and your tone. So be very mindful of that. Mercury in Gemini is just making sure it's a fantastic time for open communication, but just making sure that you're being very truthful. Then on the 17th of June, we have Saturn going retrograde in Pisces. Um, this is a great time to do a past life reading. I think I've said this on uh, some of my other videos, especially the numerology video. Um, this is a great time to do some soul searching, uh, do shadow work, uh, use your intuition to clear out and tidy up like anything in your past that you're carrying around like baggage wise, that kind of thing. Um, and this is a great time to ask that all important question like what have you done to make your life better? What have you done to make your life better? I know. I have to ask that myself that question all the time. But, you know, I'm a Virgo, so. Um, all right. On the 18th, this is when we have the new moon in Gemini. So the new moon in Gemini is like on Father's Day uh, here. is uh, at 1237 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will say this again. I am saying it on Eastern Standard Time because that's where I'm located. Please check, like, to see your time zones or if you're in another country. I get that. Um, just check your time zones, but I'm doing Eastern Standard Time. So on the 18th at 1237 a.m., um, we have the new moon in Gemini, and this is a wonderful one. It really and truly is, and I'm really happy about it. Perfect time to make plans for the future without having any attachment for the outcome or how those plans or dreams or manifestations will come into our lives. So what we're doing here is we're asking the universe, like, this is what I want. We're going ahead and thanking the universe for what we want. Like, I want a new home. Thank you for bringing me a new home. I want a new car. Thank you for bringing me a new car. I want this new opportunity at work or whatever. You're putting it out there and you're having no attachment to the outcome or how it comes to you. However it comes to you, you just, you accept it. You're just like, okay, all right. I wasn't expecting it to come to me this way, but I'm willing to accept it. It's a good deal. Um, on the 19th, this is going to be ultra lucky because Jupiter is sextile Saturn. And that's giving us some extra confidence. It's giving us some extra luck with this new moon in Gemini. I really, really love it because we've got the, we've got with the new moon in Gemini, we've got Mercury, the sun, and obviously the moon in Gemini. It's just it really and truly is a fantastic time. And having Jupiter sextile Saturn the day after the new moon hits its peak, giving us that extra confidence, that extra little push of luck. This is wonderful. Okay, on the 21st, we have the sun moving into Cancer. Cancer season has started, and it's also summer solstice. So great time to celebrate. Fantastic. I love this time of year. I really do. I don't really like the heat, but I love this time of year. Um, Mercury is also sextile Mars that day, so it's a, lot of, it's a time for a lot of fun, a lot of humor. It's just, 
it's a good time. On the 25th, we have Mercury square Neptune. Now, this is going to bring us into like a lazy day. It's going to encourage us to have like that lazy day where we're just like, not going to get a lot done this day. You know, and depending on your placements in your chart, you may not feel it as strongly as others. Um, on the 26th, we have Mercury moving into Cancer. So this is a wonderful time for you to really be opening, open up to messages from spirit um, because Cancer is very, very intuitive. So this is a wonderful, I think I said this on the numerology show, um, this is a great time to marry the logic and the intuition. This is a great time to put those two together because Cancer is a very, very intuitive sign. And Mercury is the planet of like communication and logic. So it's a great time to bring those in together. This is a really important time to listen, to understand, instead of to listen, to respond. We as a society do that too often now. We listen to a conversation to respond, not to understand what the person that is talking to us is actually saying. We do that so much. It breaks up everything. I mean, it breaks up um, marriages. It breaks up partnership. It breaks up friendships. It's a, it's a hard thing. So having Mercury into Cancer is a wonderful time for us to get into that habit of listening to understand instead of listening to respond. Um, on the 30th, we have Neptune going retrograde, which is a great time for reevaluation. It's removing those rose colored glasses. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so we're going to see relationships, finances, businesses with more clarity. Um, plans for the future start replacing fantasies for the future. Actions start replacing the dreaminess. Um, and on the same day, Mercury is trying Saturn and Mercury trying Saturn is realistic decisions. Isn't that great? I mean, a time to make realistic decisions when Neptune is going retrograde. I dig it. It seems like pretty on target. <laughs> and one more thing of housekeeping before I go, um, all of these are general readings, so if they resonate with you, that's great, and if they don't, that's okay too. Make sure you check out your sun, moon, and rising sign, because sometimes you'll resonate more with your moon or your rising sign more than you do your sun sign. And this is not, um, this is not a horoscope, this is a reading, so it's okay to look at all of those instead of just focusing on your rising sign. But it's a lot of fun, and it puts all the puzzle pieces together when you see all of them together. When you see all of your signs in your top three together. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate your support on my channel. Um, I I hope you're enjoying this format. Let me know in the comments below if you're enjoying this format as opposed to the format that you know I switched from. And so now, stay tuned for your zodiac sign well hello libra let's see what this new moon in gemini is gonna bring you <clears throat> i mean you know air sign to air sign sorry i'm looking at the goofy cat and the thing is, I am stuck in the office today with Itchy and Scratchy. Um, <clears throat> we cut the grass, and now, like, everybody's itching. Well, okay, one of the three dogs is itching. And one of the four cats is itching. But here we are. Everybody's on the allergy medication. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here, Libra. Get these. Okay. All right. 
right, so we're kicking it off with the Eight of Acorns, Energy and Results. Then we're moving to the King of Shells, which is Harmony and Integrity. Then we're moving to the Queen of Crystals, which is Comfort and Prosperity. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that is my cats fighting through a window. Hear them yelling at each other? I don't know if you can hear it or not, but they are. Then we have the Knight of Crystals, which is Endurance and Determination. And the Five of Feathers, which is Strategy and Resilience. Okay, let me tell you something, Libra. This is totally what I love about you. So we have the Eight of Acorns. Energy and results is like moving Things are starting to pick up speed. You feel like you've been backpedaling. You feel like, and a lot of us do. A lot of us feel like we've been backpedaling and we've been just mired down in mud and in like just wait, wait, wait kind of atmosphere. Not pleasant, really. I mean, it's frustrating. But things are picking up. Things are definitely picking up speed for you. And I feel like it's just, it's moving in, um, it's moving in more of a direction that I feel like is going to be um, more in harmony with what you want and what you want for your future. So bringing in the king of shells, harmony and integrity. This is definitely you operating with integrity. And again, this is your choice. If you're not operating with integrity, during this like time and place <clears throat> this saturn retrograde is definitely going to kick you in into gear if you are operating in integrity and you're moving in like that path that makes you feel or that you do feel really secure in and you feel like this is balanced this is a harmonious place um where you are, and again, this keeps coming up, where you're listening to understand the situation instead of listening to respond to the situation, I feel like this is going to bring you a lot of really good responses because the Queen of Crystals is comfort and prosperity. The Queen of Crystals is someone that she is stable. She may like nice things, but she doesn't mind working for them. She, she's okay with prosperity, but she doesn't mind working for it. She doesn't mind putting in the energy to be comfortable with her surroundings and who she is. Um, so there's that comfort and prosperity piece of the puzzle. Again, it's moving faster. It's moving faster than it has. And now you're starting to see some of these things come in. The Knight of Crystals, Endurance and Determination. The Knight of Crystals is akin to the Knight of Pentacles, which is the slowest moving um, card in the tarot. That's Jennifer's opinion. That is not like a hard and fast rule. And I don't know if it's written down anywhere. But the Knight of Crystals, Endurance and Determination, stay the course. Stay the course. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep moving forward. Even if you're just, I don't want to say moving slowly because that's not right. I feel like it's because you're moving in moderation. You're moving one step at a time. You're moving um, not to just get to the end. You're moving in a way that you can enjoy the ride. Um, the five of feathers, strategy and resilience. The thing that the, the thing is here, you are you're experiencing prosperity and you're experiencing you're experiencing harmony, you're experiencing prosperity, and it's not just prosperity financially. I feel like it's prosperity feeling secure, it's prosperity in your knowledge, so your knowledge is probably growing. Feeling all of that prosperity come in. Um, <clears throat> the reason why you're getting all that prosperity is because you felt um, you've had a lot of strategy to things that you've had resistance to. That That's wrong. Like things that have come in your way. 
things that you had um, obstacles there. Hey, now the gray matter's working. When you had obstacles in your path, you've developed a strategy of like how you need to get around it. How, you know, you've been resilient enough to say, you know what? I'm stranded here for the minute, but let's go ahead and make sure that we have everything we need. <laughs> let's keep moving forward. Let's keep making like things happen. We can, we can get through this time. And yes, you can, you can. Being resilient and developing a strategy shows the balance that is Libra. I mean, really, Libras are all about balance and also very intelligent. So I feel like bringing in that, like showing that endurance and that determination to get to stay your course and just to say, this is, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. If new opportunities appear and you decide to go with them, that's fine too. That's absolutely fine too. But you're not going to get to those new opportunities if you don't, if you don't keep going with determination. And I feel like it's like new opportunities will come your way if you choose them. Just like if you choose to be, if you choose to be resilient, you know, again, good things come your way, right? Huh? I don't want to leave it like that. Okay. I will say this. <clears throat> if you have a lot of air in your chart... If you have a lot of, like, uh, placements in air signs, you know, um, Libra, um, Aquarius, I'm, like, I, like drawing a blank. I'm literally drawing a blank with the air signs. Um, <clears throat> but Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, if you have a lot of air placements, it could cause a lot of indecision around this new moon because... The new moon's in Gemini, Mercury's in Gemini, obviously the sun's in Gemini. That can cause a lot of us a lot of indecision. I just want to preface this. Okay, so we've got the Queen of Cups, <clears throat> the Knight of Pentacles, which again is akin to the Knight of Crystals here. So you got that twice. Um, then we have the Hermit card. The Two of Pentacles. The Seven of Cups. I can't get my hand up here. The Seven of Cups. And I clarified it with the Lover's Card. Okay. So we're starting off here with the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups energy is she's very creative. She's very artistic. Uh, very much a Libra. Um, but very creative, very artistic, bringing in that, um, that sensitivity, that feminine sensitivity, and also like looking like in search of happiness, like emotional well-being and happiness. And, but the thing is here, she's immersed. She's immersed in her emotions. <clears throat> she's immersed in the water. She's immersed in it, but it's not taking her over. 
she's still in control of her emotions. She's still in control of her emotional well-being. She's listening to her emotions. She's letting them be the, her guide, but she's not letting them rule her. Then we have the Knight of Pentacles, who, again, slowest moving card in the tarot. Just Jennifer's opinion, not a hard and fast rule. But he's moving methodically. He's moving one step at a time in moderation. He's not stopping. He's not stopping, but he's moving methodically. He's moving thoughtfully. And along the way, he is picking up everything that he needs. Along the way, he is gathering everything that he needs. Knowledge, security, money. I mean, it's all there, right? So that's the thing that you want to remember here is that he's, he is gathering knowledge. He's gathering, well, he's gathering it all as he moves through because that's what pinnacle energy is, um, is knowledge, money, security. It, it's attachments. It's attachment to material things. And he's picking it up and dropping it off as he moves forward. Um, <clears throat> the hermit card, the hermit card is a bit tricky for me because the hermit card is like encouraging you to detach from the situation so that you can see it clearer so that you can see the, the issue, the problem, the decision, whatever, so that you can see it clearer so that you can make a healthier decision, a better decision, um, and, <clears throat> and it, it takes some soul searching. It takes some of that introspection to step back and really look at the bigger picture, to remove yourself from the landscape and look at the bigger picture and look at what's going on. And I just want you to see in this, like when she decides to come down, <clears throat> either way she goes on the path, it's lit. Do you see that? There's lights all along this path. So it doesn't matter which way she goes. The path is lit for you. And there's a lantern to help you a little bit even more. But the thing is, in order to decide where you want to go, you may need to pull back, detach from the situation, and see what's the best course of action. And this is important because when you decide what the course of action is, the next thing is to keep it in balance, to keep in balance the attachment to the material things, the money, power, uh, security, knowledge, all of those things that are the pinnacle energy. You need to keep it in balance with the spiritual side. You need to keep those two in balance. You can't be too spiritual because you live here in the physical. You do have to have some physical things in order to survive. I mean, the sun and air are two top two right there. Water comes in third, and that's a close third, I'm just saying. But <clears throat> you do have to have some physical things here in order to keep the vessel that you're in alive. So keep that in balance. Make sure you keep in your spiritual balance and your material, your, um, the, that attachment to the material imbalance. The thing is, when this gets out of balance, or if you are like trying to move too fast or you haven't completely det detached from the situation, this could really put you in a place of indecision. If you find yourself in that place of indecision, it's time to drop back and punt. You know, it's time to drop back and look at like, what do I need to do here? I need to focus on my emotions, but I don't need to let them rule me. I need to focus on the material, but I don't let it need to overrule my connection to the spiritual. You know, I need to step back and look at the bigger picture. If that's what you need to do, do it. Because that's going to help you make this decision. And I'll give you a hint here. None of these are wrong decisions. All of these choices came to you for a reason. All of these choices came to you for a reason. The biggest thing here is I can tell you what's going to help you out of this is to follow your passion. Follow your passion. 
What is it that makes you feel whole? What is it that makes you feel connected? Not just to spirit, but to the universe, to your, you know, other people, to yourself. What makes you feel whole? What, what has that driving passion? Keep that in mind because that's going to help you make this decision as well. <clears throat> moderation, I think, is a big part of this. I think moderation, because you are moving faster, things are picking up, but they're not at light speed yet. The best thing I can tell you is keep it in balance and move in moderation. I think you've had some pretty healthy, like, I don't want to say wake up calls, but I want to say growth spurts. Maybe spiritually, maybe emotionally, uh, maybe even like materially or physically. But you've had some pretty healthy growth spurts. And now it's time to just be like, okay, we need to, we need to move in moderation here. Because after, after feeling like you're stagnant, and things start picking up speed. You start to want to move faster just instinctively. Let's just slow it down just a little bit. Itchy and scratchy. Manuka. The sacred self. Shakina. Shekina. I I swear I mispronounce everything. Just you know, I'm southern. What can I say? journey within all right I don't know what that is clearly it's an important note to myself um, that's why it was stuck to my glasses <laughs> all right time for the advice cards the first advice card from the animal deck is meadowlark cheerful journey within Find joy in self-discovery using intuition and imagination, knowing it is part of a greater whole. Cheerfulness bubbles up through song, even when flying. Yellow represents summer and the new moon. Shut up. Oh my gosh, that's so perfect. It builds its nest in the grasses to remind you to stay close to the earth. Mm, so awesome. Okay, the sacred self. This is such a beautiful card. Oh my gosh. Unleash your spirit. Express your gifts. Dance to the sacred rhythm of life. Mm. Okay, and the last advice card comes from the essential oil deck. It is Manuka. The emotional aspects of Manuka. It releases feeling forsaken, distrust, and wounded. It instills uplifting, comforted, and loved. It creates the ability to access creativity in higher realms and to be supported by the divine. The centering thought. I am fully supported by the divine. I am never alone. I am healed. I am whole. Affirmation. 
is why is it so easy for me to feel loved? And the chakra is the root, the sacral, and the crown. Well, this is this is truly important. I, there's, I feel like you've got a couple of messages here, honestly, Libra, because I feel like it's important for you to stay grounded and stable, but I also feel like it's important for you to listen to your intuition and listen to, like, the like the inspiration and that connection to spirit i think that's really important there's a lot of balance energy and that's something that you're good at there's a lot of balance energy that i feel like is coming in but above all above all whatever this is that you're doing move in moderation one step at a time i mean rome wasn't built in a day and neither were you libra Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for your support on my channel. I am just absolutely, I, it's the best time of my life. I'm just telling you. Um, make sure you check out your monthly numerology uh, that is also on this channel. And um, again, if you are still watching on my old channel, I am getting ready to shut that down like in the next few months. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to this channel before um, the other channel is. <laughs> Thank you again. I hope you enjoy this new moon in Gemini. It's going to be great. It really is. Until we see each other again, Libra, get out there and make your magic. Bye. Bye.